Heartbeat Podcast, a podcast about health, politics, and society. Episode 5, Heartbeat Podcast, is all about whether Namibia should ban the sale of alcohol once again. South Africa, our closest country politically, economically, and perhaps also regionally and culturally, decided to ban the sale of alcohol once again. Will this happen to Namibia as well? So to find out if a ban is appropriate for Namibia, we'll be speaking to PhD student at the University of Cape Town, Monica Kampkwema, and we'll also be speaking to local professor Roman Grinberg at the University of Namibia. Stay tuned. We will now turn to what people on the street have to say about the banning of alcohol in Namibia once again. Do you think that the government should ban the sale of alcohol again like they did in South Africa? Yes, I want so, so. Why? Because alcohol is... ah. Because alcohol is not good in the... in the... In the community, yeah. Why is it not good? Why is it not good? Because the alcohol they make me as a drunk rubber and so on. They cannot and But then, can we, maybe you come back? Good afternoon. Do you believe that banning the sale of alcohol is an appropriate response to the rising number of COVID-19 infections? Yes, I do believe it has to be banned again because drinking encourages people to gather in one place, and it is going to spread COVID-19 even more. As well as the man that was in Old Dhabi that was expected to have COVID-19 that went on a drinking spree with his friends. That was the word on the street. We will now turn to our key interview after this. Welcome back to Heartbeat Podcast. We will now turn to our panel. Monica Kamkwema, who is in Cape Town, South Africa, and Roman Grinberg here in Windhoek. Good afternoon. I am joined now by Professor Roman Greenberg of the School of Economics and Management Sciences at the University of Namibia. Good afternoon, Roman. Good afternoon to you. And by Monica Kampwema, who is a Namibian student doing a doctorate in public health at the School of Public Health and Family Medicine at the University of Cape Town. Presently, she is in Cape Town. Hi, Monica. Hi, Pancho. Good afternoon, listeners and Prof. Roman. So the reason why we're having this panel on this episode of Heartbeat is to discuss the fact that on the 12th of July, South Africa reinstituted a total ban on the sale of alcoholic beverages. So we just want to jump straight into it and ask you, Monica, what really is the reason behind this? Um, so first of all, South Africa is currently the country in Africa with the highest caseload, the highest number of cases of coronavirus. And this has been, despite almost a true uh, five-week-long lockdown, which had restricted all movement of of the community. community. And uh, thereafter, during this initial lockdown, there was a complete ban, obviously, on the sale of liquor and tobacco, which is another thing that, that also we thought we should mention. And this ban was then lifted in at the beginning, early days of June, and oh, sorry, and uh, things went back to normal in a sense. Like people were allowed to go back to work, those who who could not work from home, and there was also a temporary lift on this ban on al- alcohol, but the ban on cigarettes remained from then, and it's the remain till now. But unfortunately, with um, increasing cases, which was bound to happen anyways, but the government saw that there were actually increasing number of cases, and they thought this could also be linked to people socializing more and using alcohol as a means to socialize. 
um, as well as an increase in cases of hospital admissions that were actually related to alcohol. So in that sense, the government then thought it wise to reinstitute the ban on liquor sales. Do we have any sense of what are the public health justifications for this and are they actually evidence-based? Mm -hmm. So from a, if we look at it from a public health perspective, the South Africa and Namibia, actually, we're all in the same boat. We do have an alcohol problem in general. There's a, there's a problem of alcohol abuse and resultant alcohol-related injuries and trauma and violence. So in that sense, way before even the COVID-19 outbreak and all this, we, have been know, we, we know that these problems are existent in our, in our communities. But in terms of a short-term solution, the government decided that it would be wise to ban alcohol and in that way actually limit um, admissions to emergency departments and to, um, to emergency and trauma departments in hospitals as doctors were actually reporting that they were using their time and scarce resources to be attending to alcohol-related injuries and traumas as opposed to COVID-19 related admissions. Um, a doctor in Helen Joseph recently actually said that the empirical findings are showing that um, since the ban in, in the alcohol, um, and since alcohol ban was reinstated, there's been an almost 90% decrease in car accident related admissions, as wow. well as a, a 36 yes, as well as a 64% decrease in assault related admissions. Where Although this is only in one in central Johannesburg at Helen Joseph Hospital. This may be only in one hospital in um, central Johannesburg, but other doctors have um, have actually re they have um, confirmed or they have said that they have seen this. But no formal evidence has yet been gathered as, as such. Right. And in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide, uh, policymakers are taking decisions based on limited evidence such as this, which actually hasn't gone through the usual process of peer-reviewed uh, publication. So Roman, turning to you, I would like to ask, what are some of the ramifications of, of this? And especially uh, given that in April, when the alcohol ban was instituted in Namibia, uh, well, it was instituted much earlier in, in March, but on April 28th, Reuters came out with an article saying alcohol smuggling jumps in Namibia amid coronavirus crackdown. Um, the situation in Namibia uh, is slightly different from uh, that of South Africa, uh, but probably not that much. It would be good to think that it, we could uh, permanently <clears throat> deal with uh, alcohol-related issues just simply by banning them. But, uh, uh, all that will do is push uh, alcohol production and sales underground um, into the informal sector. And it will cause people to substitute uh, away from uh, alcohol to uh, other, uh, other well, what are now illegal substances. Um, so uh, I, I'm not convinced that uh, South Africa is the only country that I'm aware of that has uh, banned alcohol uh, sales apart from Namibia. Uh, I think maybe there might have been one or two others in Africa, but generally speaking, that wasn't the case. Uh, yes, we have a problem that links alcohol to violence. Um, and yes, we have to deal with alcohol. I mean, I was, I'm doing research on uh, alcohol consumption and alcoholism in, uh, in, in Africa. We're doing some econometric work. And according to World Health Organization, um, alcohol is, uh, uh, is, is far more uh, dangerous than COVID. Uh, 3.1 million people worldwide die on an annual basis from alcohol-related uh, illnesses uh, and defects. So um, thus far, we've, we've I mean, all, all, all of these deaths are terrible, but alcohol seems to be far deadlier uh, than COVID. It would be nice to think that we can deal with it simply by banning, but that doesn't work in the longer term. 
Uh, I understand why uh, the government in South Africa is is doing this to uh, relieve pressure on the hospital uh, system, but a large part of the problem of the hospital system in South Africa uh, is to do with uh, underfinancing and also to do with corruption. Um, uh, they don't have the capacity to deal with this. Uh, I understand that. I, I understand why they're doing it. Um, part of the problem is the inability to, uh, to differentiate between uh, alcohol uh, consumption uh, in, say, a restaurant and inside uh, a bar, because most bars are licensed uh, to serve food, so it's the same license, so the government can't, can't differentiate. So if you want to have, like I, I often do have a glass of wine with my, with my dinner when I go out, I can't. Um, I have no criminal record. Uh, whatsoever, not here or anywhere else. So um, it, it's not uh, it's not obvious that uh, banning alcohol uh, is necessarily the way uh, to manage this. Yeah. The Indians during the lockdown uh, uh, imposed a seventy percent tax uh, on alcohol um, sales uh, in order to discourage it, uh, which I thought was clever at least because governments worldwide are suffering uh, from massive losses uh, of tax revenue due uh, the economic consequences of lockdowns. Um, and that might have been a bit wiser. Uh, but I understand why they've done it. Um, both South Africa and Namibia massively undertax alcohol. I was just looking today at a global comparison uh, of taxes on beer, uh, and South Africa and Namibia are well below the world average. Wow. Second of all, um, yeah, and uh, tax people, for goodness sake, we pay an enormous amount for the social consequences of smoking, and uh, we tax cigarettes, and we should be taxing alcohol. But uh, on, on the question of bans, and, uh, and, and cooker shops. I don't know if you know the origin of the word a cooker shop. The cooker shop uh, from uh, Ovamboland comes from uh, um, the Angolan beer. It was from the last time that somebody tried to ban uh, alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. If you might remember, the apartheid regime banned black people from drinking white people's beer in yes. the 50s and 60s. And uh, the, the name cooker shop came from the Angolan beer that was smuggled in uh, to northern wow. uh, wow. uh, at the time. And that's what's going to happen. You ban alcohol, all you will do is enrich the black marketeers. And what do we do with the fact that many of the people who have uh, alcohol abuse issues are really poor? So if you increase the prices, they'll lose even more of the, the money that they have their disposable income, will that not affect families? Um, it, it's, it's problematic, uh, would be, uh, yes. The same thing is true of addiction to tobacco. Mm. Many of the people who are, so, so, I mean, I agree there are equity issues involved here. Huge but, equity uh, issues. Uh, there's, there's no doubt, why should people who are not, uh, pay the social costs uh, of people who are addicted to alcohol and tobacco. Um, mm. uh, these things should be legalized and taxed heavily and the full social cost be devoted towards the, uh, improving the health service so that these issues can be mitigated. But uh, banning? I'm not so sure. I, I, I'm not uh, uh, that every time we have a problem, we ban uh, something. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the mentality of lawyers, not economists. Can I conclude, Pancho? Well, yes, please give a very fast concluding remark. Okay, so my, my whole stance is just that this should, this should open the discussion onto broader solutions towards the use and abuse of alcohol. Thank you and so much. And especially now younger people who are starting to drink alcohol at a very young age 
which will have impact on their psychological and health development. Yes. So thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Okay, thank, thank you. you. This brings us to the end of Heartbeat Podcast. Thank you so much, and I look forward to you joining us next week. Pancho Molongeni signing off.